Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm Diane Desiel and today, just like I promised, I'm back for the construction of the pen block for kids. We're now ready to do the little pull-on pen for kids. I'm going to do again a size 4, but you're going to use the kids measurement that you got and also other measurement that you could take from the chart. Now on the paper, the first thing we will do is trace the grain line. This is the length of the pen and it's going to be the grain line for back and front. When your center or grain line is traced, we're going to place the different level that we're going to need for the pant, like the bottom, the knee, the crutch level, and the waist. I'm going to start at the bottom, tracing a square line on both sides of my grain line. The next measurement is going to be right away the waist, so completely at the, on the other side. You have a measure here that says waist to the floor, and here I got for my size 4, 63 centimeter. But like I just said, it's all the way to the floor and I don't want the pen to go all the way to the floor. So I'm going to make it 3 centimeter shorter, so 60 centimeter. Now from that point, at 60 centimeter from the bottom of the pen, I'm going to also trace a square line on both sides of the grain line. The next measurement that I will put is the measurement from the waist to the crotch level. If you remember when we did the women's block, I said it's the measurement that you have to sit on a chair and measure on your side seam from the waist to the chair. Here for my size 4, it's 17.5 centimeter. Once you have your crotch level, you could also trace a square line on both sides. The last level that we're going to place is going to be the knee level. You also have it on your chart where it says waist to knee. And here for the size 4, I have 35 centimeter. Then from the knee point, you're going to also trace a line square from the grain line on both sides. I did my construction line in black and now I'm going to switch color. I'm going to do the front pant in red and I will use a different color such as the blue for my back. Now to do my front, I'm going to start at the bottom of the pant. On this chart, you have the measurement for the width at the bottom of the pant. I have here a 29 centimeter for my size 4. But this is the all around of the bottom of the pant. And we do have to separate this measurement for the back and the front. But also place half of the measure on one side and half on the other side. So right away I'm going to divide my 29 centimeter by 4. And the measurement you find, you place it on both sides of the grain line at the bottom of the pant. Now right over this line, you also have the knee circumference. But here they did take the body measurement, so I'm not really going to use that measurement. Instead of that, I'm going to use the same measurement as the bottom. I'm just going to add an extra 5 millimeter just to have a normal shape of leg for my pant. So my one quarter at the bottom, I will place it also on each side at the knee level plus five millimeter on each side. We're now ready for the crotch level and you could use the kids measurement, but here I will use the size four measurement where I have a measurement of 62 centimeter. Now, just like for most of the other construction, each pattern piece is one quarter of the total garment. But when you do construct pant, you also want to distribute half and half on each side of the garment. So instead of dividing my 62 centimeter by 4, I'm going to divide it right away by 8. And this is going to give me 7.75 that I will place on each side of my grain line. Now still at the crutch level, Today I wanted to do an easy recipe, so today I'm going to give you a fixed measurement for the extension of the crotch. I will put 3 cm extension for the front crotch for this age group, but if you are doing a pant for a smaller size group, 
you could make the extension a little smaller but not less than 2.5. If you're doing your construction for a larger size group, you could make that fixed measurement a little bigger, up to about 4 cm. Now if you remember, we just put 1 8 of the hip measurement on each side and it's time to add some ease. So I'm going to ask you on the side seam to add an extra one centimeter for ease. We're now going to trace the side seam. You're going to start at the bottom to the knee and then to the knee to the crotch level. We're also going to trace the inseam of the pant. So start with the bottom to the knee. Now to trace the inseam from the knee to the crotch point, I'm going to ask you to place your ruler at the knee point, but the other side about a centimeter inside from the crotch point. Then you're going to trace about halfway, then continue tracing, moving your ruler little by little until your crotch point. Let's continue with the top part. Now I want you to trace a square line from the original 1 8 that we measure on the crotch side. Trace a square line going up all the way to the waist level. To complete the front crotch, you could measure again the extension that you did, but this time measure the same thing going on the vertical line. Then you could trace a little curve line. Here, just as a reference, I have a depth for my curve of about 1.5 cm. Now to complete the front, we're just missing the side seam on top. And you do remember that we're doing a little pull-on pant, so no opening. And when you do put your pants on, it has to go through the hip before reaching the waist. So I'm going to ask you to just do a square line from the crotch level, going all the way up to the waist and even continue for about five millimeter. Now from that point going up, you're going to do a very, very light curve to reach pretty much the grain line or just a little bit past the grain line. Now we change color and, and we're going to do the back plan right over the front. We're going to start at the bottom where you already divide your bottom by four, but I like to do the back a little wider than the front. So you could add an extra five millimeter on each side to get your back. We're going to do the same thing at the knee level. So I'm going to also measure five millimeter bigger or wider on each side. Now we're already at the crotch level where I'm going to give you fixed measurement for the side seam where I want you to add an extra 1.5 centimeter. That's going to be ease. And on the crotch side, I want you to add two thirds of the extension you did on the front. So here it's going to be two centimeter. We can now connect the dot on the side seam just like we did on the front. And we will do pretty much the same thing for the inseam also. So from bottom to the knee. And when you do the upper part of the inseam, you're going to go in one centimeter, trace halfway, and then curve until you reach the final destination. We're now going to find the waist and center back point, And you're going to measure it from the front plan. You're going to go up 3 cm and towards the side seam 4 cm. Now that you have your center back and waist point, you're going to trace a straight line for the back crotch from that point exactly to the front point that you raise on the center front line. You're going to complete the line with a curve from that point all the way to the extension of two centimeter that we did for the back crotch. Now to make the back waist, we're going to use exactly the one quarter of the hip measurement, or you could take it from the plan, the one eight towards the side seam plus the one eight towards the center front. Here my measurement is 15.5 and I'm going to put it at the waist level from the center back waist 
and I'm going to pivot until my zero point touch the construction line for the waist level. When it's in position, you could trace. Now to complete the side seam, you're going to measure, just like we did in the front, a little five millimeter going up. Then we could trace the side seam using the French curve, but it's going to be a very light curve. You're going to trace until the five millimeter going up. Now we could fix this little part of the waist in the back using the French curve on a very short distance, maybe five or seven centimeter. Then for the elastic waistband, you could decide to do a separate pattern piece or you could decide to do the integrated elastic waistband to the pant and that's what I will show you. So to complete the pattern, you're going to need the elastic that you'll be using for the waist. Then we're going to add over the waist of the back and the front twice the width of the elastic plus an extra three millimeter to five millimeter for the thickness of the folding. Now this second line that we just traced or the extension that we put, you have to see it like if it was a little box to put our elastic inside. So from the top line, you're going to trace a square line touching the waistline from the plant. As you could see, the angle is different in the front and the back, and it's normal like that. We're now going to do exactly the same thing for the crutch side, so front and back. Now the construction is finished. You're just going to need to put notches before retracing both back and front pattern. Your notch are going to be at the crutch level, at the knee level, knee level at the inseam also, you have a crotch notch for the front and you have double notch for the back crotch. And I'm going to ask you to add extra notch just to remember the width of the elastic. You're going to place the notch on top of the construction line at the width of your elastic for both back and front. Finally, when it's time to do your sample, you're going to need to cut an elastic for your waist. So you could go back to the body measurement of the waist, but usually we do subtract 2 to 2.5 centimeter to the body measurement, and we cut the elastic exactly at that measurement. So here are my waist for a size 4 was 52. I'm going to subtract 2.5. I'm going to cut my elastic at 49.5 to have it all around. That's it for today. I hope you enjoy and thanks for watching. I see you next time.